Welcome to another edition of Bookie Beatdown. Strictly for DraftKings here. Technically not another edition Strict, of Bookie Strictly Beatdown. for Albany. I was told it's Albany, Albany. not Albany. Albany. No, no. That's for people who are not in the know. I've always called them the Albany ri River Rats. And no. frankly, I'll probably call it Albany a few uh, more times no, on no, here, I'm going but it is Albany supposed now. to be Albany. Uh, DraftKings here, we, you know, we got the prices... A little bit later on Wednesday, and it's been busy around here, just trying to get it out here for you guys. So uh, why don't you start off with your DraftKings team here? Is this a GBP or is it a cash game team? You know what? I, I want to say it's a bit of a hybrid, and it's for that reason... It's MMA because you know what? Yeah, yeah. I would think it's going to play... Nobody's really safe. I would assume it's going to play better in a cash game situation, yeah. and obviously I went with uh, the, the smarter route. I didn't take a massive amount of risks, although there's a lot of fighters on this card. You could go down that risk factor. But let's start out with Francis Ngannou, $9,700. Come on. If you're going to play a GBP or a cash, I think he's okay. Cash should be a little uh, riskier because, yes, Anthony Hamilton and just could just try to grind him and have him score nothing effectively. But I just got a good feeling that he'll land those hands. This is a guy they're trying to build. This is a guy in a good spot here. It's young for the heavyweight division, obviously a potent finisher. And if he does land those hands, Anthony Hamilton has shown a tendency in the past to seriously get hurt when he does get hit. So plus, I'd have to go with Ngannou there. Plus on our, uh, our betting video, you said that Anthony Hamilton barrels forward with his chin kind of right there exposed. And we know that our boy Francis Fran Frankie Murder likes to likes to land that uppercut right up the pipe. So oh, yeah. like it, when I was watching him versus Omolanchuk, he charges forward at Omolanchuk at one point. I'm like, you're gonna get slipped and ripped if that, if you do that against yeah, Frankie that's the Murder. Thing. And, and listen, for ninety seven hundred dollars, I want the first round finish. And this is a fight that I think to myself, if Anthony, if Anthony Hamilton does get a takedown, maybe it'll go to the second round. And Ganu eventually should put him down. For ninety seven hundred yeah. is expensive, but there's no denying when you look at traditionally what he scores ninety one and a half points, Paul. This is a guy that didn't just finish one guy in the UFC. He's fought in the UFC multiple times now, and he's obviously getting better every single time. So I can go into at $9,700. Moving down, Corey Anderson, not the popular pick for you, at $9,000. But there's something very important to realize here. People can say what they want about Corey Anderson. What's his chin like? Shogun hurt him. Uh, obviously, the Jean Vellante fight didn't go in his favor, and he's someone that has been susceptible in the past. Bright future, high ceiling, hasn't really lived up to those expectations, so to speak. But if you want to look at that fight with Jan Blankowicz as a comparison to his fight with Sean O'Connell, Jan Blankowicz is going to give him that, that trouble in the striking department. Jan Blankowicz is infinitely better than Sean O'Connell. And what can he do? He can go out there and neutralize it in really boring fashion. Now, this is the thing that's very important to note. That doesn't sound like a big DraftKings winner here. I was just going to say, this is the thing that's important to note. Yeah. Grinders are tend to have a tendency to score a lot higher now. The takedowns are going to play for him. The ground and pound on the ground is going to play for him. And if he's able to get any positional changes on the ground, it's going to be able to help him. Sean O'Connell's not a jiu-jitsu guy, so it's not crazy to think that Corey Anderson goes down, he goes in, he takes him down, he pounds him on the ground, he controls him, rinse and repeat over and over. Corey Anderson has gone to the decision in his last four fights, but if you look at it, what he traditionally scores at 85.4 points, how is he getting all these points without ever getting a finish? That grind, that grind and that ability, I think he is safe against Sean O'Connell. I think he avoids those big power punches, plants him on his back, and hey, the guy's been working with Mark Henry on his hands. He is a decent striker, obviously a work in progress. For 9,000, I will take Corey Anderson. Moving down, we got Justine Keish. $8,300. Justin Keish is super aggressive. She missed weight today. And she missed by 0.4, which Man. is always a dangerous thing. It's like, you know she was struggling, so she didn't have to give up 20% of her purse. And you know what's very worrisome here? And then, yes, Justin Keish isn't the most fabulous play. Why? Because I... Well, I will well, get it. She's the most that. fabulous play because she's on your team. Yes, yes. Now, she got injured on the Ultimate Fighter, as we already spoke about. Someone that didn't get to compete on Tough because of the injury. She comes back in the UFC. She does get the win over Nina Ansaroff. Then she pulls out of a follow up fight once again due to injury. So, obviously, this is a girl that struggles with injuries. Now that she misses weight, you have to think there's probably an injury that hindered her from making that weight. So, is this a risky pick? Yes. My issue is Ashley Yodder is taking the fight on short notice. Yodder is a girl that is tough, but I think that you can control her, and Keish is just so physically strong. Yodder has got a very good arm bar. She's a good grappler, but she seems to get out-muscled in a lot of uh, transitions, a lot of scrambles. Against Keish, who's that much stronger than her, I think that she does get dominated. I think there's a very small potential for Keish to get the finish late in the fight, but more so, I think of a domination, three rounds, yeah, the injuries hurt me a little bit. But moving on, we got Tiago Traitor. Not super high on this. I am high on the price, so $7,800. Pretty cheap. He's a guy that's a Muay Thai specialist. He will bang for it. Yes, Mike Dillatore caught this guy and knocked him out. That is worrisome. But Shane Burgos is coming in a short notice. He's the local guy. He looks good, but he's very unproven. For $7,800, I got to make that play on Traitor. 
This that was more of a GPP play. If you want cash game, I'd probably try to avoid him. Mm -hmm. Moving on, JJ Aldrich, seventy seven hundred dollars. Not baby. enough. Yeah, not a none. Not enough good things I can say about this girl. She has very high punch output, good southpaw stance, third degree black belt in Taekwondo, brown belt in BJJ. She's very well rounded. I I am worried that she's coming in short notice against Juliana Lima. My one thing though, and and people are telling me, listen, Juliana Lima is going to look a lot better than she has in the past. She's going to have a full camp coming into this fight. She always has a full camp going into the mo the majority of her fights. She just doesn't look all that good, so to speak. And when J.J. Aldrich, they're saying, flip side to that, one girl's got a full camp, one girl has no camp at all. Yes, but she's coming off a fight very recently. So she's already put in the work. She's put in the camp. She didn't take a whole lot of damage against Ilver Lynn Alvarez. I expect her to be in good shape. I expect her to roll on. And rounding it off, not a whole lot of money, obviously. Keith Barish, $7,300. Keith Barish is a grappler. Ryan James is a grappler. The guy's from New York. The guy's been waiting for a long time to get back into the UFC, obviously because of a string of injuries in his own right. But he's a local guy. He's extremely well priced at seventy three hundred dollars, and that allows you to, to to afford the other players on your team. Now that I have seen the weigh-ins, though, if I was gonna make one one small move, I would move Keyshaw for a cheaper uh pro, like a, a cheaper opponent, sorry, cheaper player, and then maybe take off Thiago Traitor. But I don't mind the team. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds all right to me, except for Corey Anderson. That's just. Just asking for it. Well, They're actually a bearish at the weigh-ins. I thought he looked pretty good at 185 yeah. pounds because when he took on uh, Drysdale, it was at 205, and he looked a little bit, you know, a little bit softer around the edges as any of us would look with an extra 15 pounds on our body. Um, he looked, he looked pretty, pretty solid. He's obviously a lot shorter than uh, than his opponent, but height doesn't really. When he fought matter. Drysdale, though, when he fought Drysdale, they brought him into Vegas to be the Lamb, and that's how the yeah. Lamb looks. Not in great shape. Now he's in New York, his home state. And is Ryan James the lamb being brought in? Only time will tell, Paul. The bookie doesn't think so. No, the bookie the bookie thinks that bearish isn't for a rough one. I find that I find that number to be a little bit crazy. Anyway, I got uh, I got Frankie Murder at the top of mine. Uh, wow. ni ninety seven hundred. He's expensive, but this guy finishes, and we've seen. We've seen our uh, Hamilton have a propensity to get knocked out. Is and everybody going to have Ngannou, though? I like him. You like him. He seems like the obvious play. Would Trump, fading him per perhaps help out? It, it, it would save you a lot of money as it well. It certainly would, yes. And if he loses, you're, you're laughing. But uh, I just think I, – I don't think this is the spot to fade Ngannou yet. This is not quite the spot. We'll get there eventually. But Some Jared Rochal type guy, sure. But he's yeah, tough, so. yeah, Jared <laughs> Rochal would be a tough matchup for him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got uh, Derek the Black Beast, Lewis. I think Lewis is just gonna just gonna bully this guy, go forward, land those body kicks that are just hellacious, oh, nasty. Go forward, just and, and and put this guy to put this guy to sleep. I think it doesn't even matter that the other guy's faster. Lewis is gonna go in there and and wreck shop. So obviously, I've got two of the top guys off the board on my team. Now the rest things be get you. squirrely here. Shane Burgos. Oh. UFC debut, but all of his fights by way of finish. Yeah, guy, uh, the guy seems to have pretty quick hands just from watching a little bit of tape on him. This is a GPP team, man. We're looking for first round finishes. Uh, we got Brian Camozzi. I don't know if he gets a first round finish, <laughs> but I feel safe with him as a lower price guy, uh, underdog kind of style play here. I don't mind him, but I think the path to victory, like you said, grind. Grind yeah. and try to get a, a tight decision. I don't see blowout. I feel safer with him. Burgos is a decent player. Around that spot. Like, I don't think he's going to get first, uh, knocked out in the first round. But then we get real squirrely here. Real squirrely. We got uh, Joe Gelati. Who is uh, 7,500? You could replace Joe. You spent all your money and now you're ending up with Gelati and some <laughs> other guys. Probably you could replace Gelati with Barish, who's Barish is the safer play there. But uh, Gelati, we know he likes to throw haze. And I'm looking for guys to throw haze on this team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, we need a lot of things to come together. I'm, I'm going for the top. It's, it's an all or nothing approach right here, Cody. And finally, we got Sean O'Connell. Because you know what? Corey Anderson gets tired. Corey Anderson was considering retirement coming into this fight. I don't know if you caught any of the interviews about that. Corey Anderson is changing his nickname from Beast in 25A to something else. He's already thinking. He's already looking past Sean O'Connell. Sean O'Connell saw an interview with him. He seems very laser focused <laughs> on the task at hand in this spot. Uh, and he's 7,200 Oh, better. and he's 72. <laughs> Laser we, focused and a 72 We have seen Corey down. Anderson slow down later in fights and become increasingly more hittable later in fights. Against world-class opponents, Paul. 
Against Jean Vellante. You got to finish in the third round. Who had a better ago. performance against Jean that was Vellante? A long time Sean ago. O'Connell? Yeah, but he was after he after your boy Anderson uh, got finished by Shogun. He no, considered it was a retirement. Split decision loss. Or, or sorry, when he after he, I didn't mean sorry when he lost to Shogun, he got dropped a couple times in the first round. He considered retirement. He was almost done. Yeah, but let me ask you something. What's his mentality what, now? What, what what would Sean O'Connell do against Shogun or Jan Blankowitz? Would Probably he be have able a to fight take of them? the night. Would he be able to take? No, he'd get knocked out. No. Gmo touched him. He went to sleep. Uh, the Latifi slide touches hammer? you. Ah, okay, I get it. You, you go to sleep if the uh, yeah. Listen, man. Listen, you ought to justify your your seventy two hundred dollar price. I get it. I get yeah, it. That's it's, it's just that's the way this game is, and, and obviously. The way to actually do this is probably mix and match some of the fighters that we brought up here, guys that you actually like, and make your own team. Because giving out one GPP team on a little section like this, there's tough. no guarantee that anything is always going to hit, especially in a GPP format. Cash games, and I, I don't even really want to play this card from a cash game perspective because I really don't feel too safe with too many people. Fair enough. But uh, that wraps up the uh, DraftKings breakdown for UFC Fight Night Albany. Look out for our UFC Fight Night, or UFC 206 DraftKings breakdown. Fight Night Toronto. Which will also be up on the Fight Network YouTube page and on our Podomatic. <laughs>